Once again, you are welcome to this wonderful session. We are going to look at the physics of a level and specifically the topic we are going to look at, it will be heat. I know last time we had been looking at mechanics. So let us look at heat as a topic. And I know we had stopped somewhere, which was, um, we had begun with the thermometry, but uh, we can just continue from where we had stopped. And we were looking at, uh, at platinum resistance watt thermometer. So together, let us look at it, be prepared, and then we go throw it together. So I'll begin by sharing some work here, which you'll be able to see on your screen. And the, this work here, like the way I've told you, we had already looked at some types of thermometers, but now we are going to look at, we are going to first finish the platinum resistance thermometer. Now, let us first begin with the, the advantages of a platinum resistance thermometer. Remember, you saw how it looks like, you saw how we can use it to measure temperature. But at this moment, let us look at some advantages. You know, everything has advantages and disadvantages. So, the first advantage of a platinum resistance thermometer is it is accurate. Okay, it is accurate since it is possible to measure resistance accurately. Okay, so we know very well that a platinum resistance thermometer uses a platinum wire. Okay, or it uses the resistance of a platinum platinum wire or coil as its thermometric what property. So. If it is able to measure resistance accurately, then it is true that a platinum resistance thermometer is accurate. Okay, so we can be able to use it because it is accurate. Two, another advantage there on your screen, you can be able to see that it can be used for fairly wide range of what temperatures. Fairly wide range of temperatures. That meaning its range it can be able to measure temperatures over a wide what over a wide range okay like when you look at uh, the liquid in the glass thermometer like for example those clinical thermometers they measure just a very short range of temperatures like for example from zero up to 40 okay that is like with the clinical what, thermometer but when you come to a platinum resistance thermometer, its range, it goes higher than that, okay? It can begin like from negative 20 up to maybe 200, depending on the way it is calibrated, okay? So it can be able to measure fairly wide range of what temperatures. So it is also another advantage of a platinum resistance thermometer. Let us go to... Now, you may find we may have some other advantages, but these are the two advantages which we can take note at this moment. So let us go to disadvantages of a platinum resistance thermometer. The disadvantages, you saw it the way it looks, okay? Like we have a coil, the platinum coil, which we have to dip in, like for example, a liquid, and then we because we may be interested in measuring the temperature of that liquid. So, like, it is a disadvantage in the way that we cannot use it to measure temperature at a what? At, at a point, okay? Like, we cannot measure, we cannot use it to measure temperature, like of a, a hot, just yes, something which is hot, like a metal, that's a point, okay? So we cannot use it to measure temperature at a point. So it discriminates, it does not measure temperature everywhere, okay? Now, 
Another one we are saying it cannot be used to measure rapidly changing temperatures. Okay, we cannot use a platinum resistance thermometer to measure rapidly changing temperatures. Okay, so like the way we can use a clinical thermometer or a thermocouple or it is not, for it, it cannot work like that. Rapidly changing temperatures, it can't. Okay, it has to be given some time. You put it like in a room, you take your time, it first absorbs the temperature of the surrounding before you what? You take a reading. So you cannot just measure temperatures which are changing rapidly. So it is a disadvantage. Okay. Then, of course, another person may say maybe it is bulky. Mm, it is bulky. But that is all what we can eh, mention at the moment. Let us go to some examples. Uh, of course, we may be having some uh, calculations we, about the platinum resistance thermometer, and we can just go to examples. Like, you know, the examples here that are cheap, like, for example, you can be able to see this example. Remember, we came up with a formula, okay? A platinum resistance thermometer does not give direct readings. We measure the temperature, like at ice point, at the pure boiling water, and then at unknown temperature. Then we use a formula to come up with the temperature. So we cannot just use a platinum resistance thermometer to just get direct temperature what? readings. Rather, it is through calculations. We use a formula. So that's why we are going to the first example there. It says a resistance thermometer has a resistance of 21.2 ohms at the ice watt point. Then 21.90 ohms at steam, at the steam point. And then 28.11 ohms at some unknown temperature theta. Okay? The question is calculate theta on this on this scale of what? Temperature. Calculate theta on this scale of temperature. So we are required to do this. We are given the resistance of that platinum wire at ice point, we are given also the resistance at steam point, and we are given the resistance at unknown temperature, what? Theta. So they want us to get the value of what? Of theta. So remember, you have to recall your expression or the formula for finding temperature using a platinum resistance thermometer. So let us go solution here, and we say, we are saying from, yes, this is our formula, the formula, of calculating temperature using a platinum resistance thermometer is given by this. Theta, which is the temperature, is given by R theta. This is resistance at unknown temperature theta. Minus R naught. This is temperature at ice point. Divided by R100, which is the resistance at 100 degrees of boiling water. And then R naught is the resistance at ice watt point. And then you multiply everything by 100 degrees centigrade. And this temperature which we are going to get here is going to be in degrees. So since we are given R theta here, R theta is 28.11 ohms, R naught is 21.2 ohms, and then R100 is 21.90 ohms, okay? So together we can substitute in this formula. Where R theta, we write 28.11. R naught, we write 21.2. Everything are given in this statement. And when we simplify there, so you subtract on the numerator, also you subtract on the denominator, divide the two and then multiply by 100. The answer which you will get here, it will be 987.1 degrees centigrade. So that is how we can work out this question. I know you'll, on your way, you'll meet some of this type of what questions. So this is the way we are supposed what? to work them out. Number two, 
Still, we are given this. They are saying that the resistance of a certain platinum resistance thermometer is found to be 2.56 ohms at zero degrees. Yes. So they may not tell you that at ice point. So at the moment, they are telling us at zero degrees centigrade. You just know that this is the ice point. Then the resistance is 3.56. Okay. 3.56 ohms at 100 degrees centigrade. This is at pure boiling water. This one here, this is the resistance. And then 6.78 ohms at 444.5 degrees centigrade. Okay. The boiling point of sulfur on the gas scale. So they're telling us that this, this is the resistance at this temperature. And this temperature is the boiling point of sulfur, but not on the platinum thermometer or the platinum resistance thermometer. Rather, it is the boiling point of sulfur on the gas scale. Gas scale, you just know that they are meaning the constant volume of gas thermometer, like that, or the constant pressure gas thermometer. Now, question one says, calculate the temperature of the boiling point of sulfur on the platinum resistance thermometer. Are you seeing that? So they want us to get the temperature of the boiling point of sulfur. Like the way I told you, this is 444.5 degrees centigrade. Is not the is not the temperature on the platinum thermometer, but is on the gas scale. So they want us to calculate that boiling point of sulfur on the platinum resistance what thermometer. B they're saying the thermometer is a mass in a given liquid and its resistance is observed to be that. What is the temperature of the liquid on the platinum scale? Very good. Then you see, why are the two answers different? Okay? All right, let us go to solution. Part A, they want us to get the temperature of boiling point of sulfur. This is unknown temperature on the platinum resistance thermometer. So that unknown temperature, we have to use this formula of ours from the platinum resistance thermometer, whereby from our statement, we are given R theta. The resistance at unknown temperature theta is 6.78 ohms. The resistance at ice point is 2.56 ohms. R100 is the resistance at 100 degrees of boiling water, which is 3.56 ohms. So when you substitute in the formula, theta will be equal to 6.78 minus 2.56 divided by 3.56 minus 2.56. And you multiply it by 100 degrees centigrade. When you simplify there, you get 422 degrees. So this is the boiling point of sulfur, but on the platinum resistance, thermometer. Remember the other one was boiling point of sulfur on the gas scale. So these answers may not be the same, but they just be near each other. Okay? So this is the boiling point of sulfur on the platinum resistance what? thermometer. Now, let us move away from A. We go to B. B says the thermometer is in a given liquid and its resistance is observed to be that a given liquid. What's the temperature of that liquid on the platinum resistance thermometer or on the platinum scale? So B, we are going to still work out in the same way. B, using the same formula. Okay? But only that in this R theta. R theta is the resistance at unknown temperature. The resistance when it that coil is immersed in the liquid and that resistance is 5.05 r naught is still 2.56 r100 is still 3.56 this one here so when you substitute in the formula you get that and when you simplify the answer there which we get is 249 degrees centigrade Yes, that's how we can get that's the temperature of that liquid. Okay, 
the platinum coil was immersed in that liquid and the resistance was 5.05 ohms. So this is the temperature of that liquid because we are not knowing it. They wanted us to calculate for it. Then you see, see they're saying, why are the two answers different? Now, which answers? The boiling point of sulfur in A, why is it different from that one which is given in the statement here on the gas scale? Okay, why are the two answers different? Okay, the answer here we are saying that this is because the different thermometers have different properties, okay, which vary differently with the temperature changes. And these only agree at fixed what points. Are you getting me there? We are saying, when you look at a platinum resistance thermometer, it uses resistance of a platinum coil as its thermometric property. When you come to a gas scale, it uses a pressure of a gas, okay, at constant volume as a thermometric what? property. Now, these two thermometric properties that are different. That's why we are saying different thermometers, they use or they, or they, they, they have different thermometric what? properties. And those different thermometric properties, they vary differently with the temperature change. But they only agree, they converge, they only agree at fixed what? Points. That is at upper fixed point and lower fixed what? Point. But between those two fixed points, those properties, they vary differently. That's why we are supposed to get different what? Or that's why those two thermometers, they show different readings or they show different temperature what? readings because they use different thermometric what? properties. Then, so that is all how we can answer this question here. We can go to another one, but before that, we are saying that we can go to not or NB, like when it calibrated, okay, when a thermometer, when a platinum resistance thermometer is calibrated against a constant volume gas thermometer, the resistance R of this platinum coil is found to vary with Celsius temperature theta according to to this formula here. Okay? So there is a relationship between resistance of a platinum coil, okay, with the gas watt thermometer when they are calibrated, okay? That when you we calibrate a coarse antivolume gas thermometer against, okay, against, or when we calibrate a platinum resistance thermometer against the coarse antivolume gas thermometer, the resistance error of platinum is found to vary with Celsius temperature theta according to that formula there. And the formula is R theta is equal to R naught. R theta is the resistance at unknown temperature theta. R naught is the resistance at IC point. Okay? Into 1 plus alpha theta plus beta theta squared. So this is the relation which which connects these two thermometers, a platinum resistance thermometer and a gas watt, a constant volume gas watt thermometer. So this relation is very important. That's why here we are saying where R theta, R naught is the resistance of a platinum at zero degrees, okay? And the alpha, alpha, alpha and beta, are constants. Alpha and beta are, are constants. Okay? So if alpha and beta are constants, 
then we are going to be just going we are going to be we are going to be following this relation here and we 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 see how to use this relation okay so r not is the resistance of platinum at zero degrees alpha and beta are constants so meaning they can be any values they can be zero two negative a half okay they can take on any values example let us look at example there the resistance r theta the resistance r theta of a plat of a particular resistance thermometer at a salacious temperature theta as measured by a constant volume gasometer is given by okay so we are given the relation i think that so in this relation here it is r theta is equal to r naught into bracket 1 plus 0 0.5 theta plus 2 times 10 power negative 4 theta squared i think this relation here it is the same as the upper one when you compare the two relations you find the value of alpha here is 0 0.5 and then the, uh, the value of beta here is 2 times 10 power negative what? 4. So this relation here in this example, the same calculate the temperature as measured on the resistance thermometer when the temperature on the gas thermometer is 50 degrees. I know this is totally new to you, but we are going to see how to answer this question here. How do we get that temperature on the platinum resistance thermometer, which is corresponding to a certain temperature on the gas thermometer, which is 50 degrees? So here we can be able to check there. We go to solution. Let us see. Where do we begin from? We begin with our relation R theta, the resistance at a certain temperature theta is given by r naught into that. I think that. Okay? r theta is the resistance at any temperature. So this is a general formula. In the case, we are comparing a platinum resistance thermometer with a gas watt thermometer. So now, meaning that in the case my value of theta is 50, deg 50 degrees, like for this case, if it fit at 50 degrees, meaning I'm going to come to this formula, I substitute wherever, wherever I see theta, I substitute there what? 50 degrees. So meaning R of now theta, instead of R theta, I'm going to write R of 50. It is equal to R naught, leave it the way it is, into bracket 1 plus 0 0.5 times theta, which is 50 degrees. Then plus... 2 times 10 power negative 4 times 50, de 50 degrees squared. I think that 50 squared. Okay. <clears throat> and when you simplify there on the right hand side, you find when you simplify everything inside the bracket here, you get 26.5. So I'll not show you in physics here how to simplify that, but you should be knowing in physics, we assume you know mathematical computations. So the resistance at 50 degrees is equal to 26.5 R naught. Okay, after, after try noting that down, we can go to next. Now we, get, we can get R of 100. R of 100. That is resistance at 100 degrees. We, we do the same. Now, we come again back to this expression here, where theta you substitute there 100 degrees. So here to be R of 100 is equal to R naught into bracket 1 plus 0 0.5 times 100, where theta substitute 100, okay? And then plus 2 times 10 per negative 4 times 100 square D. I think that very good so where if, wherever you see theta we are substituting 100 degrees 
So when you simplify inside a bracket there, R of A, that is a, it is a mistake, I think. It's supposed to be R of 100 here. It is equal to 53 R naught. Uh, correct, you you'll correct for me here. It is R of 100 at the moment, not R of 50. So R of 100 is equal to 53 R naught. So after getting that, we smartly move to our formula that is from theta is equal to R naught. R theta minus R naught divided by R 100 minus R naught times 100. What is our R theta? <clears throat> it is 50, R of 50 degrees, okay? Then what is our R of 100? It is here, we have it here. So substitute them. So R theta, because now we are trying to establish this temperature on the resistance thermometer. At the moment, we are treating it as unknown temperature, what? Theta, this 50 degrees. So what is the resistance corresponding to 50 degrees on the platinum resistance thermometer? The resistance is 26.5 R naught, like there you can see here. Then minus R naught, that one you leave it R naught the way it is. Then you divide by, divide by R100, it is 53 R naught from here, and then minus R naught. So you substitute there. After that, you can factorize out R naught. It is common, it's common. So when you, when you simplify there, okay, when you simplify there, I think when you simplify there, what do we get? Uh, way after factorizing out R naught, you see you simplify there on the numerator, you get 25.5. Numerator, I mean denominator, you get in 52, and then you multiply by 100. The answer is 49.038 degrees. So this is the this is the temperature okay as measured on the platinum resistance watt thermometer and 50 degrees was the temperature as measured on the gassy thermometer so this is how we can tackle this number one yes so allow me to end there very good